Hello Team FD, you dirty dogs, and welcome back to Transfer Winners and Losers, where we put Silly Season underneath the microscope to see who's coming out on top. Joining me for this journey is Zach Jellab. How are you, sir? Yeah, not too bad. A little bit tired. Uh, up late last night watching the Champions League final and making a video for it. But uh, yeah, not, not too bad. Thank you, mate. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. All good. A little bit ropey. Had a few uh, IPAs. Never really agree with me all that much. But that's enough detail, to be perfectly honest. And yes, you got out our brand new show, The Reaction, didn't you, after the game? And we're going to be bringing you guys at home much more content like that as we move forward into the season. But let's move forward onto our transfers because it doesn't really, Zach, get much tastier than the prospect of two UCL finalists, one winner, moving to the Premier League, does it? Indeed. And first up, we have to talk about Thiago Alcantara, the 29-year-old who is in his final year of his contract. And if he doesn't commit to a new long-term deal, the club are reportedly willing to do a deal to let him go for just £27 million, which is, bargain. to be quite honest, a bargain for a player of his quality, especially when he stays fit. Uh, manager Hansi Flick insists the player hasn't made up his mind just yet, although he did have the press on strings post-match. <laughs> and what a game he had last night too. No player made more passes, more ball recoveries, <laughs> more tackles and interceptions, or created more chances than he did last night. It was ridiculous. What a performance. And as well as conducting the play on the field, he was also conducting the celebrations too. From the stadium to the hotel party. Players definitely enjoying themselves with the trophy and some drums. Yeah, before we move on to our first transfer winner, I did want to sneak in a section about the other Thiago, Thiago Silva, who's also been in the headlines this week, mm -hmm. hasn't he? Now, he's been with the Parisians for eight years now, winning seven league titles. Domestic success galore, but couldn't quite clinch a trophy in Europe, which is why he was brought to the club. Almost got there, uh, a valiant effort from him. And he's subsequently been linked with a move to Chelsea. But Thomas Tuchel did say post-game if he wanted to stay with the Parisians, he'd always be welcome at the Parc de Prince. Et voilà, c'est comme ça. Mais quand même, avec avec chaque euh, avec chaque décision, il va rester toujours mon joueur. Et c'est clair, il est dans mon cœur. Clearly, Tuchel is a fan, but it does look like he wants to try his hand at the Premier League, age 35, and it appears Chelsea are going to offer him a one-year contract. And my, oh my, do they need someone of his calibre. They conceded 54 goals in the Premier League last term, which was the worst record in the top half. Uh, so it's safe to say his experience will come in a lot of use there. But Chelsea probably will need to offload a senior centre-back because they already have four at the club. Although there's two players entering the last two years of their deal. And Tamori has been linked with a loan move away to French side Rennes. He'll get a good education there. They're a very well-run club. And they've also just signed youngster Javier Miamba from Barcelona, who's already been dubbed the next Virgil van Dijk. Not very helpful, is it, comparisons like that. So they are well-stocked in that position, but relatively speaking, compared to other top, top sides, a little inexperienced. Would you be happy to see Thiago Silva come through the door on a one-year contract, Jalab, as a Chelsea fan? Yeah, I don't think it's a relatively bad deal at all. It's something that I've probably pushed for over the past couple of months. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes we do get a little bit caught up on age. He is turning 36, but John Terry won the Premier League when he was 36. Mm. And even even on the wage structure, he's going to be coming in for possibly one year, possibly two years, and on maybe less than £100,000, which is pretty good uh, in terms of Tennis. our wage structure. Now, I maybe have questions over how he is with dealing ball, with balls into the box. Yesterday, he seemed pretty okay with it, even though they did concede um, from a cross, which, which is something that Chelsea have struggled with uh, this season, dealing with crosses and dealing with set pieces. Uh, but, I mean, we've seen him over the past eight years he's been at PSG, how good of a centre-back he is. 
and if he can add that experience, because that is kind of what Chelsea are missing in that defence. It's not great when you're the guy who kind of deals with um, uh, all of your kind of lines and that as a defence is your right back, who is Asper Laqueta. He kind of needs to be the guy that is the centre back. Um, so if he can come in and add that experience and, and kind of show the guys like Tamori or like um, Zuma and Christensen, uh, then I think that would be fantastic. Mm. Uh, I, you're right, we're pro probably going to get rid of one of those centre-backs. I don't know which one. You'd, you'd maybe lean towards Christensen out of them. Um, but, but I think overall it's not necessarily a bad deal. And if you can keep fit, that's maybe why, my one concern. Um, I think it's not, not too bad overall, to be mm. fair. Yeah, he's never been overly reliant on pace either. Mm. Expert positioning and an expert distributor as well, which you've missed at times in yeah, defence. But what do you guys at home think? Let us know about the two Tiagos and if you want to see them at your clubs in the comments below. Moving on to our first winners. We move on to our first winner now, and that is none other than Arsenal Football Club, as they are completing a deal or nearing to completing a deal with Lille for centre-back Gabriel for £27 million. Pounds. He's alleged to be flying to London today to complete that move. Now, the Brazil-based journalist Vinicius Furlan, who has close links with Gabriel's camp, claims the player actually turned down more money from Manchester United, uh, who made a big push late on in the transfer, literally a few days ago. But the defender preferred the project being presented in front of him by Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta obviously proving to be a bigger attraction than Oli. The 22-year-old is set to agree a five-year deal with Arsenal and joins a revamped Gunners defence that will also be boosted by the arrival of William Saliba. However, if you talk to an Arsenal fan, he's apparently the next Beckenbauer. Gabriel will have to quarantine for 14 days though, which will see him miss the Community Shield game against Liverpool on Saturday, though you would have expected him maybe not to play straight away anyway. And attention will now turn to moving on some defenders as Arteta has eight centre-backs in his squad. But focusing on Gabriel, what can he add to this Arsenal side, Chris? Maybe you can quarantine with Doogie when he gets back as well and they can become best friends. Um, yeah, let's give you a breakdown of his sort of playing style and his strengths uh, because he is extremely impressive in the air. I mean, his six foot three frame ensured that he won two thirds of his aerial duels in 1920, which to give you some form of comparison is about this is about the same as Diego Godin. Uh, he's also left-footed, which is something that Arsenal need in the side at the moment. Pablo Mari is left-footed, but has, um, of course, sustained a big old injury. Uh, and he's not really embedded himself into the side yet, has he? And the former Zagreb man is really strong in the tackle as well, isn't he? Winning 86% of them last term, which uh, compared pretty favourably to David Luiz's 70%. Also a very solid passer, ranking third in the squad for moving the ball into the final third. He's actually a really accurate long passer. His short game does need a little bit of work, uh, but really decent on that front given his age. Uh, only three of his teammates played more minutes than him last term as well, so he's got a clean bill of health and like several of Arsenal's defence. And after a seven-year absence, he was also part of that back line that helped Lille qualify for the Champions League the year before last in 1819. And this term, they kept 12 clean sheets, only bettered by PSG's 14 before league earner was brought to a halt. Does lack a bit of experience though, only just really worked his way into the side in the last 18 months. He's only got 39 league appearances to his name and he did take some time to, to incorporate himself into that back line. Um, what do you guys at home think? Uh, will Gabriel immediately approve Arsenal or will it take him and Saliba a little bit of time to find their feet and should we temper our expectations? Let us know in the comments below. Moving on to the final segment. Just before we move on to our first loser, if you guys at home are not already subscribed to the Football Daily channel, then what are you doing? What are they doing, Chris? Smash that button God, no. and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Ow. Now, as I said, our first loser is Juventus. And it may not have really ever seemed likely. However, any hope of them signing Paul Pogba has been dealt a final blow this weekend. The Italian champions have been continuously linked with a reunion with the Frenchman who left the club 
back in 20 uh, 2016 for a then world record fee. And up until midway through the season, it looks almost certain that he would be leaving Old Trafford this summer. As recently as February, agent Mina Raiola, his agent, superstar agent, had a feud with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer <laughs> after, the United, <laughs> um, after the United manager stated that Paul is our player and not Mino's. Raiola responded by saying, Paul is not mine and for sure not Solskjaer's property. I hope Solskjaer is not suggesting that Paul is his prisoner. But six months on and the super agent has now confirmed that his client will be staying at Old Trafford. He told Sky Sports, Pogba is staying at Manchester United and I think they are trying to extend his contract. We'll discuss that soon, no stress. Manchester United have a project and he is 100% a part of that. They won't accept any offer for Paul Labille Pogba this summer. It looks like they're on better terms now, Hamill, isn't it? Yeah, and Pogba looks pretty happy at Old Trafford too, right? I mean, the midfielder started all but one. The Red Devils, nine games after the restart, played every minute in the Europa League quarter and semi. And his numbers look pretty good too, actually. He's producing more key passes, uh, which is 2.2, than any other point in his career. And the same can be said for completed passes as well. 66 per game, seven successful long balls, which is outrageous and does indicate that, you know, he is picking it up from deeper now that the creative burden has been lifted by the arrival of Bruno Fernandes. Um, subsequently, he has only contributed to four goals this season in just over 1,200 league minutes, which pales in comparison to his previous endeavours, right, where he got 13 goals and nine assists in 18-19. But like we said, that is being spread along the forward line now. You've got that partnership with Marshall and, Ras uh, and Rashford blossoming. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, of course, has made a, an immediate impact and Greenwood is uh, emerging too. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't kind of have to do it all and can be at the base of midfield to spring those attacks with that excellent array of passing that he has. Um, now, his contract runs until 2021 uh, and there's an option for a year extension in there as well. But apparently United are going to offer him a new three-year deal and it would be wise, wouldn't it, to ramp that up as soon as possible. Meanwhile, just to touch upon another rumour, uh, but a player that falls under the Mino Raiola stable, uh, Federico hmm. Bernardeschi was being touted as a possible make in a move for Pogba or for Napoli's uh, Arcadia Schmilic. Um, Raiola's touched upon that as well, saying he can comfortably play for Juve, but if there are better conditions available for all concerned, then we'll evaluate uh, those situations together. So Pirlo already early on in his managerial career has a big decision to make regarding the future of Bernardeschi, who of course has struggled for minutes, has struggled for goal involvements, but is a very talented individual. Um, so it might be that he's available to pick up for cheap. Who knows? Uh, where should Bernardeschi go and should Pogba stay? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for this week's winners and losers. Transfer winners and losers. Uh, winners and losers will be returning very shortly with the return of football. Uh, Jelan, what should people go and watch after this? Well, if you're not already subscribed to the Football Daily Podcast channel, then please head over there, check it out. We talk about how to fix many a teams like Barcelona, like Arsenal, um, and a lot more. Then we'll be doing uh, talking about other teams in the future too. Get your suggestions in those comments below. And why not check out the Football Pyramid over on Euro Football Daily or the reaction which went live at midnight last <laughs> night where we spoke about the Champions League final. I completely forgot about it, to be honest, uh, mainly because I have not had a lot of sleep. Yeah, makes sense. Bye.